Hey friends, my name is Joe Spresso and welcome to a 5 minute early access review of Timberborn, my most recent mini addiction, this time with Dynamite. So grab yourself a cup of coffee and see if you can finish it before I finish this review. Timberborn is an early access game that falls into the colony sim genre alongside games like RimWorld and Oxygen Not Included, but with a bit more overbite. So right off the bat we need to address the early access status of this game. This game will change and grow as the developer adds, removes, and improves elements of the game. Because of this, the rating will reflect the incomplete nature of the game and you should keep that in mind when considering it for yourself. Games like this are investments that you make to help and support developers complete games, but that takes time and the end product is not up to you, so it might take directions you don't agree with. I think early access is a great thing and supporting concepts is a great way to push gaming forward as a whole. Many games we all know and love have started as early access titles. Okay, now that that's out of the way, let's dive into the game. Timberborn is a beaver-filled colony sim that seems to take place in a post-apocalyptic world filled with desolate landscapes that are transformed and brought to beautiful vibrancy by water. Water is the main gameplay mechanic, and at the moment it's what you will spend all of your time thinking about. Water is needed near crops to keep them growing, and to keep your beaver friends fed, as well as satisfy their thirst. The twist is that the game will throw droughts at you with increasing regularity and longer durations. In my time playing, droughts started at 3 days and went as high as 8 days. The more beavers you have in your settlement, the faster they will go through food and water, and if they run out of either for too long, they will die. Breaking this game down, first let's talk about gameplay. The game starts you off with a tutorial that gets you started in the right direction, but leaves a lot for the player to discover. Some of this is great, but some, like finding out how to get more beavers, could use a bit more explaining. The devs have already talked about improving the tutorial, so I'm happy to leave this to trust. Next is the UI and the controls. These are really well polished, and the game operates with some standard controls that many colony sims share, like the spacebar being a pause and resume hotkey. The menus worry me a bit for the future of the game, currently they feel great, and navigating the menus makes sense and provides plenty of information. A challenge that might come is when adding new things to the game, the menus will become overcrowded without some adjustment. That being said, I'm sure the devs are aware of this, having released an already polished UI, so for now, I think it's best to put trust here as well. The enemy in this game are the droughts, and sometimes, maybe even often, yourself. The game certainly starts pretty forgiving, but as more time passes, you will need to prepare more and more for the next drought. The more you need to prepare, the more beavers you will need. The more beavers you have, the more resources you need. The more you need to prepare, the more beavers... You get the point. This identifies the core gameplay loop, and I think it's a really good one. Though I find myself wanting something more to prep for. I think other random events could add more layers to this already solid core mechanic, like rainstorms causing flooding, or odd beaver behaviors that make life a little harder for us to manage. Flexibility is one area that is certainly not lacking and is possibly the strongest part of the game in my opinion. This comes with the ability to terraform and to build upwards. Many buildings allow you to build on top of them, so making multi-layer cities is possible and very impressive. I spent more of my time altering water flows than anything else in the game, and it was a blast, creating your own rivers, lakes, or just deepening existing ones to give you more water to work with. Story. Well, outside of post-apocalyptic beavers that are salvaging from human civilization remains, and are stronger than 50 horses, there isn't much here, yet. The progression of the game makes sense for the most part, though I think some of the power generation mechanics could use some adjustment. I found myself just using a bunch of beaver wheels since feeding more beavers was easier than coming up with other fuel sources. Talking about the game's stability, I tried to break this game. While what I did was still well within reasonable means, that's almost 300 dynamite and the game didn't even stutter. And finally, price point. This is a tricky one since I think the price is great for what the game will be, but it is an investment. In the end, I'm going to give Timberborn a 9 out of 10 only for the concerns I have with the UI and needing a bit more to keep me struggling once I've made a crater lake to handle my water forever. Overall, I think this game is a must-buy for anyone who enjoys Colony Sims and is a strong candidate for anyone wanting to try one out. It is easier to learn right now than many other options and has some really fun and engaging gameplay that has kept me coming back for over 17 hours already. Have a game you want me to review in 5 minutes or less? Let me know in the comments below. And let me know if you were able to finish your cup of joe before I finished mine. Check out my other 5 minute reviews and see if you can find your next addiction. See you next time. Thanks for watching.